Meizu is a well-known Chinese manufacturer that loves saying that its phones are better than Xiaomi's. The Meizu M5 Note is one of the company's latest budget offerings and has a flagship grade build quality, decent specs and a lot more. My name is Linus, here's the full Techline HD review. Just before we start, the Meizu M5 Note costs about 150 bucks, and I will leave all the links down below the video. In the box, you get all the usual stuff that includes some paperwork, SIM ejector pin, USB cable, and a fast charger. What I absolutely love about the M5 Note is a flagship grade build quality. Just look at it, the phone is made entirely of metal, a silver aluminum finish does not attract fingerprints and smudges quickly, and the phone feels nice in the hand. I just always prefer metal made phones over the glass ones. The M5 Note has a 5.5 inches 1080p display that is just gorgeous to look at. It's sharp, it's vibrant, but the sunlight legibility is just average. We have a 5 megapixel selfie camera and a notification LED light on the top and on the bottom there is just a home button that can either be physically pressed or just tapped if you want to use it as a back key. Also, the home button doubles as a fingerprint scanner, which is very accurate and fast, but you have to wake the phone up first in order to use it. As far as optics go, there is a 13 megapixel shooter, which is coupled with a dual LED flash. I love that the buttons are tactile and they do not rattle at all. The sound quality via the headset jack is great, no distortions and great overall quality for a budget phone. The loudspeaker is also good. In effect, it is one of the better ones in this price range. When it comes to hardware, things don't sound that great. Well, the Meizu M5 Node definitely has enough power for most of the daily tasks since it has 3GB of RAM and optional 16, 32 or 64GB of expandable storage, but the MediaTek Helio P10 chip can't handle most of the intensive tasks like gaming. If you play games like Asphalt 8 on the very highest graphics, you should expect a lot of stutter and quite a few skip frames. You can fix this issue only if you switch the graphics setting to medium. Other games like Nova 3 run fine. I have always loved the FlyMe OS because of the way it looks and works. Sure, it would have been nice to see the latest version of Google's OS, but Android 6.0 based user interface is fast, there is no stutter or lag, no matter what you do with it. Also, there are some cool features like gesture and motion controls and they work perfectly. I just love those basic gestures that allow you to use the phone in one hand quite easily. You can also customize the device by changing themes, wallpapers, and so on. Finally, my international review unit comes with most of the languages, Google Play services pre-installed, and there is no Chinese bloatware. I like Meizu's camera app because it's fast and responsive. However, there are quite a few things the company didn't fix for a long time. For example, shooting modes and settings menus work only in portrait mode for some reason. You can select from quite a few shooting modes that include a manual mode or slow motion video in 720p. The Meizu M5 Note takes one of the best pictures you can get on any sub $150 phone. You will usually get photos that have plenty of detail and sharpness and the colors will look nice. Well, the dynamic range and white balance may be off in some of the shots, but the HDR mode does a decent job bringing the detail back to the shadows, while at the expense of a little bit unnatural looking picture. The low light shots have quite a bit of noise and grain, but this is usually a case with all budget phones. Currently, I'm testing out the camera of the Meizu M5 Note. This is handheld footage, today is a Cloudy day. The 1080p video looks okay, not very impressive in general, but pretty good for a budget phone. The selfies look pretty good except for the fact that the colors look a little bit washed out. 
So currently I'm testing out the front firing camera of the Meizu M5 Note. The 1080p selfie video looks good, but again, the colors are a little bit washed out. Finally, the sound recording quality is really good for a cheap phone. Close front firing camera at 1080p resolution. Today is a cloudy day. When it comes to connectivity, the Meizu M5 Note remains solid. Call quality and signal reception are great, Wi-Fi and 4G speeds are good, and Bluetooth works fine. However, I found the GPS to be less accurate than on flagship devices. A 4000 mAh battery is one of the favorite features of the Meizu M5 Note. Your results may vary, but with my usage, I could constantly get over 5 hours of screen on time with 2 SIM cards and quite heavy usage of the phone. If you need to recharge the battery, you can do it quickly in just 1 hour and 30 minutes thanks to the supplied fast charger. The Meizu M5 Note is a very solid budget smartphone that delivers in a lot of ways. I absolutely love the design and build quality of it, the speed and feature set of the user interface, the camera and outstanding battery life. My main complaints would be that the phone uses the MediaTek Helio P10 chip, which is not designed for gamers. Also, the phone still runs on Android 6.0 out of the box and we still have a regular micro USB port for charging. Other than that, the Meizu M5 Note is a great offering for the price, if you don't mind those shortcomings. It was Lionus, thanks for watching and as always guys, if you have any questions, please drop me a comment down below. Also, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe and follow TechLineHD on social media like on Facebook, Twitter or Instagram. See you soon.